What we see with this COVID-19 is a completely novel thing for most politicians. Here we have a real entity that's taken over the world and that can't be dismissed in the same way that an opponent can be dismissed. It's a real thing. It's a biological entity. It was born months ago and scientists still have little idea what it is. But if anyone is going to figure it out, it's scientists and not politicians. So what we're seeing is a kind of backlash against scientists because finally scientists have the upper hand. A politician cannot wave a magic wand, lower an interest rate, or tweet a, uh, uh, an awkward uh, phrase and have COVID-19 cower in fear. COVID-19 doesn't give a shit about Pardon my language. <laughs> COVID-19 doesn't care about politics. So uh, politicians who are naturally used to telling scientists to be in their place are perhaps a bit worried that they've lost the ground to, uh, to a group that normally isn't really much heard of. Um, it's a weird time. It's a very weird time. The scientific community has been, is not monolithic, and there have been a lot of amazing responses. There have been a lot of scientists who dropped their, their entire work, uh, their life's work, to focus on this, this new threat. On the other side, there are many scientists who, like many of us, don't think they're experts and think that it's best if someone else takes care of it, and their concern, like for many of us, is just to get back to work. So it's a heterogeneous response, but the part of the community that is uh, taking it really seriously is quite a force. Um, it's a minority, I would say, a minority of people who realize what a crisis it is and have taken things into their own hands in the sense of developing new uh, testing kits. It's been a couple of months and all of these volunteer efforts have taken their toll and they can't go on forever like this. It's one thing to go for a few weeks, uh, cutting off your normal work habits and so on, but we're now entering a phase where people are feeling increasingly uh, pressure to get back to normal. Unfortunately, COVID hasn't gotten back to normal. COVID's still with us. It hasn't changed all that much. We don't have herd immunity. We haven't got a vaccine. We haven't got even much clue about what it is more than we did two months ago. So we're still very much in the middle of the crisis and we're still being told kind of, uh, well, you dodged the bullet. It all doesn't look like Italy. We don't need mass graves, but that shouldn't be taken as a big sigh of relief and a well-earned rest. We are still fighting this thing and it may look a little bit easier over the summer, but come fall, come winter, it's going to be back. It's going to be back again. So we can't let our guard down and we have to keep... Um, vigilance, not only vigilance, we have to get step up the effort that's been made so far. Governments and institutions that have been taking the back seat have to get in the, in the driver's seat, or at least try, in order to get this thing under control. Before COVID struck, there was already a great movement toward psychedelics in science. Scientists as a whole are quite open. What was against it was the regulatory agencies. The regulatory agencies were following the politics that preceded them. It's been a mess for a long time, and we were already starting to see that crack. Uh, there's a European trial going on for uh, treatment-resistant depression using psilocybin. There are trials in the US and Canada uh, independent trial for just major depression. So already psychedelics had hit the scientific community in a major way. Add COVID to the mix and I have no idea what you get. It's, a, it's going to be a quite interesting um, thing. Actually, the first fallout is that we can't continue these uh, clinical tests that we were running because we're shut down. Uh, laboratories, most kinds, are closed for business, and so the trials that were going on were stopped. So that's not so great. Um, on the other side, 
if you think of this crisis in a way as a social crisis, what the crisis is for a lot of us, we're not in danger necessarily, we're not in much danger health-wise. There are always unknowns, but healthy young people have a pretty reasonable chance of not having a major health concern, but we've got major social concerns. Uh, solitary confinement is known to be one of the most aggressive and violent things you can do to a person. So here we are experiencing solitary confinement, which is causing all sorts of mental breakdowns, all sorts of psychiatric conditions that workplaces are struggling to deal with, friends and networks are start struggling to deal with. And here we are where we can't go get a hug or, or uh, you know, just a normal beer in a bar, let alone uh, a, a psychedelic festival. I, I don't see how psychedelics will per se be the bullet, but they're certainly going to be something that helps us recover, or like it's going to be something that many people are craving, social contact, human contact. I think that scientists have been marginalized in a way as producing things which are of questionable immediate economic value. We do research that might benefit our children or grandchildren, but science doesn't bring money today. It costs money. It's kind of a, a thing we do because we kind of know we ought to, but the point of it is a bit unclear. Here with a, with a pandemic facing us, that becomes a lot more palpable, the, the role that science can actually play. People are turning to scientists for answers, for information, right? For, for guidance, w whether it's safe to do X or Y, uh, what strategy to take. And so in the future, it would be, uh, I would hope, a good thing to cement some of those gains, to realize that had science in the, in the loop, so to speak, they would have been prepared for this better than had politicians been left to, 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 to make all the decisions. You know, there were preparedness departments that were dismantled recently. There was a whole plan in the UK, there was a department in the US. They were all cut because it wasn't deemed necessary to have responses to a pandemic. Yet from a scientific point of view, pandemics like this are a completely predictable thing. And so we could have been much more prepared. So if this crisis leaves us in a position where, politically speaking, scientists can, can point the finger and say, you better let us at the table the next time because this is not the first and it's not the last. And uh, we've got to take this more seriously and include a rational voice and not just include political uh, interests. That can be a good thing. Look, the present world is kaleidoscopically disorienting. I mean, we're all in a sort of temporary zone of where the hell are we? The first thing we all have to do is take care of ourselves, mentally, physically. Um, I don't know what that means for different people. It means different things. It means take care of your body, eating well, uh, having a schedule, sleeping, having exercise. You know, being yourself uh, mentally and physically uh, sound. If you cannot do that, then you're going to be more susceptible to illness, more susceptible to becoming sick yourself. If you can take care of yourself, then you've got to support the people around you who may be struggling to do that themselves. Your family members, your friends. You're isolated in a way that you never were before your friends that you forget about, they could be just dropped out of the whole social network because all they see are people on Skype or Zoom or, or instant messaging. People in my life seem to come and go sometimes in a scary way. And it's not in, the, in this time we don't have the normal routines of just those people we see all the time and you say hi and oh, everything is fine. We're missing that whole layer, so we need to compensate 
and reach out to friends and make sure that they are okay and I don't know often we're in very different spaces dealing with very different issues and I think this is a great opportunity for society to recognize what was really needed from society for what we needed to provide each other and what things were not essential you know what kinds of jobs were being done but actually didn't really need to be done so I think we got to look at how we're dealing right now and take take some of it for changes that are actually good you know not seeing each other is is not a good thing but giving up some of the things that we counted on like having to commute to the office to sit at the desk to push the paper around well maybe that ought to be given up maybe we ought to be stopping commuting and working from home and maybe we ought to be cooking more and, and ordering out and going out to restaurants less take a political stand if you believe in this take a help some help a, a cause uh, find something that that someone that needs help or someone that's fighting volunteer we've had tons of volunteers into the scientific community from people who want to help we need lots of organization uh, it's a very daunting task to try to figure out how to get out of this with governments and in big institutions that would normally be the leaders not leading so we need to self organize we need to come together we need to fight together and uh, we need to kick uh, some butt <laughs> we need to get this thing out of our lives and we will the aspect of boom that is a celebration is not happening and that's fair but the element of people imagining a better future of teaching one another of um sharing stories of inspiration sharing stories about science about arts about traditions that have been lost um dancing together i wish again we could do that um but for me it's 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 there in my mind as a as an inspiration i'm terribly sad that it's not going to happen this year and i'm i'm really fearful that if we don't work harder that the whole um species of festivals is in danger i'm really really afraid of that so i'm really motivated to work to try to help uh to make this uh to make us come out of this thing in a better place than we were and we really need positive thinking we need inspiration from things like boom